Welcome to The Lounge Chair, where host Melissa Parsons imparts her wisdom and knowledge to transform mindsets by teaching listeners how to choose and control their thoughts. Find motivation to take control of your thinking and make lasting changes in order to build a solid foundation of self-awareness and healthy emotional balance. Transforming mindsets one thought at a time. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Lounge Chair Podcast. I am your host, Melissa Parsons. Joining alongside me is my co-host, Shalonda Wills. And we are so honored and blessed to have you here with us today. Yes, Yes, we're going to be diving right on in, y'all. Today, we're going to be talking about hurt, forgiveness, and love. Yes. And I am just like... So excited and, <laughs> you know, that kind of like brought back old uh, memories for me Yeah, when you start thinking back about your past. But of course, we're doing it to be able to help someone else, right? right. Um, so that they won't have to struggle or stay in, you know, whatever they're in and we support them 100%. Yeah. We, we're we here better. To just share our story, they said, iron sharpens iron. Uh, yes, right. That's yes. what my Bible says. And mm-hmm. that's what we're here to do. So we're just going to jump right on into it. I just wanted to say, I want to apologize, truly, wholeheartedly apologize to anyone out there that I may have hurt. Mm. And I want you to know that if there's anyone out there that may have hurt me, I want you to know wholeheartedly, I forgive you. There's no more time that I have in my life to be lingering on to old unforgiveness and things that God is not wanting me to hold on to. Mm. He's calling me to go higher. And with that being said, Anything that's in my heart that's not right, I have to put before God. I have to surrender. I have to tell God, hey, you know, I have some issues in my heart. You know, we maybe we ought to start doing a heart check in the morning. Oh, yeah. You know, that'd be so good. That'd be so good. You know, just do a heart check. What's your heart posture? Exactly. Exactly. Know that before you walk out your door. Mm -hmm. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Know know the posture of your heart. Let be open to God. Let him show you, you know, what thing that may be deep and buried down Mm -hmm. inside that you don't you know, you don't remember, right. you know, because it, it was just so painful that you covered it up or you hit it. But I just want to say that. And, and I also want to say, you know, I, I just, wow, this is really deep. I'm sorry. This is a really deep subject. I also want to be open and honest to say, if, you know, you got an issue and you don't forgive me, I just want to put it out there that I am sleeping good at night. I, I just want you to, I just want to let you know that honestly. Mm-hmm. In other, in other words, don't let your hurt or someone that hurt you or disappoint you keep you from losing rest, right? Because forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is totally for you. And I mean, I know that there's some people out there that may be going on a journey right now of putting their marriage to death, a divorce. Some of you may be out there right now that may have just uh, just had a breakup, may have just found out that maybe your husband or your boyfriend has cheated. Maybe someone out there, you might feel like someone has disappointed you. All of those things that, you know, all stem from being hurt. You know, you're, you're, you're hurt and you, you don't deal with that hurt, that hurt then all of a sudden turns into unforgiveness for mm-hmm. that person that, mm-hmm. that person that hurt me years ago did this and that and that and this. And some people are already dead in their grave and some people still mad at those people. Right. What, what are you going to do? <laughs> That person is dead and gone, gone. and you still may. Right. When are you going to live your life? Now, I, I'm, I mean, I understand hurt is deep and it cuts deep, but we can't stay there. Mm-mm. We can't stay there. At some point in time, you have to get up. 
regardless of how hurt you are, you have to give up. You have a purpose in life. So again, I, I, I was uh, just sitting here with my co-host and I was telling her about forgiveness. I was telling her forgiveness is really spiritual. Yeah. It really is because forgiveness also leads to mercy and it leads to grace and it leads to pardon and tolerance. But I, I really mercy and grace, God gives us that mm-hmm. freely, every day. every day, freely, every moment, every second, how dare us. How dare us keep it, keep it for ourselves and yes. not give it out to others. Yeah. And then we wonder why all of our blessings are hindered. I mean, we have to be open with God. At some point in time, we have to say, okay, God, show me mm-hmm. what it is that's hindering my blessings. What it is. I mean, we, we all know that we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? right. So we know that it's a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. And what we're here today, what we're trying to do here today is to teach you how to fight spiritually. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to fight spiritually. You have to be able to open your mouth. Your angels are not released until you open your mouth, your mouth and that everything is freedom of choice. Mm-hmm. Everything is mm-hmm. freedom of choice. So if God has already given us angels to protect us and guide us on our behalf, why aren't we telling them, telling our angels to go out and do what needs to be done? Right. You know what I mean? On our behalf, go out and fight. You know what I mean? Get those taunting spirits of you should kill yourself. You should do this because you're so hurt. You should do that because you're so hurt. And then, oh my God, can you can you imagine what they did to you? And the taunting spirit just goes on and on and on in your mind. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder why people commit suicide. I mean, they don't want to go through the process yeah. of the healing process. So they figure that they would take an easier way out. But who is it easier for? Is it easier for you? Because when you commit suicide, you still have your loved ones left behind to pick up those pieces. And then that's a wound, a wound that's created in them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then it just goes on. And this is how, you know, this is how different generational curses and stuff going. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't know you were going to take me there. But I, I, I thank you for that because we're trying to teach people to turn from their faulty thinking to think positive, to shift their mindsets. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they need to know how. They need to know where to start. They Mm -hmm. need to know where to begin on doing this to, you know, be able to pray over their families, Mm -hmm. you know, to be able to pray in the spirit realm, you know, speak in tongues, do those things that we, that God has already gifted us and put inside of us for us when we need it. But no one, uh, not no one, but a lot of us do not pick up the gifts and the tools that he has provided to be able to do what we need to do to speak over our families. And um, I actually have a book that I'm even reading. I had it for a very long time. It's called Commanding Your Morning. And I'm going to just pretty much read a little bit about that a little bit after you know, I'm going to allow my co-host to just jump in a little bit about, you know, hurt or forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. We all know that we're going to experience this hurt, you know, love and, and, and ultimately go through the process of forgiveness. But to pick you back off of what you were saying, Melissa, about, you know, how do we move from that? Yes. Let's just be 100% honest. It's overwhelming. Yes. You know, when, yes. when we hurt or someone has done something to us, uh, we get wrapped up in our feelings and our emotions. Mm. And it's, it's weight. It, it's a heavy weight yes. to bear. And to be quite honest, it's hard. Mm. It's truly, truly hard to get out of that. It's truly hard to uh, 
if you're going through a, a downward spiral, it's hard to grab yourself, you know, and that's the importance of, of community, of not isolating yourself, of, of reaching out to a friend, of reaching out to God. Right. You know, it says uh, over and over again in the Bible that he is made strong in our weaknesses. And a lot of times we get stuck there, one, because we're not aware of the spiritual attacks. Yes. Especially over our minds. Yes. Once we are aware, we have a choice. That's we have right. a choice to either want to rise up and press and fight against it or fight towards it, or we can stay there. And yeah. we all know what it looks like to stay there. <laughs> Arises depression. Yes. Arises other mental um, issues, yeah. thoughts awfulizing thing, mm -hmm. you know, it can lead to something so much more than what it, than what it was intended to be, yeah. you know, That's suicide, yeah. wanting to do harm to others. It, we don't know the magnitude of how a small little thought can dwindle, dwindle down into our feelings, into our emotions that would cause us to do something or mm -hmm perceive something yeah. that is totally wasn't the intent. Right. You know, one right. little thought can lead to an enormous action. Yeah. You know, you you are led by your thoughts. What's in your mind, you're going to go and you're going to pivot and you're going to go in that direction where your mind is taking you. So how do we counteract that? You know, right. some you're going to, all of us are going to go through hurt. It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not once. Right, it's it's inevitable. You keep living, you keep going, you gonna get hurt okay. by friends, by loved ones, by stranger. However, you're gonna rise up of it. Amen. A lot of times it's so minuscule, it's just like you only live once. We only have one chance of getting this life right. Yeah. You know? One so why not make this decision to assess what is being put on us to make us hurt? You know, right. what is why, what is considered hurt when we're disappointed, yeah. when we're let down, when we had an expectation that wasn't met, yes. when we are d depending on something, someone, or, or even us. We tend to put so much on ourselves that we disappoint and we hurt ourselves, yeah. you know, this perfectionism thing. You mm -hmm. know, we're not perfect. We are not perfect human beings. We are going to miss the mark sometimes and it is okay absolutely it is okay trying to please people or trying to have people please you something someone is going to let you down and it's going to be devastating at yes. times however but god <laughs> you have a purpose he has a plan for your life you know that hurt or that devastation or that moment in time uh, that made you feel a certain way or that opened up some wounds and now the emotions are pouring out, that thing does not define you. Yes. That thing does not define your purpose. That thing cannot stop you. So we have a choice to either allow that thing to consume us, to bring us down, to open up the jar of negativity and, and uh, bring on thoughts that are just unforeseen, or we can take it, we can assess it, we can give it to God, we can spew on it, we can dwell in it for a moment. Yes. For yes. a moment. I'm not saying, oh, just but getting hurt is just like, no, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, you got to lean into your, we're human beings and leaning into your emotion and your feelings. It, it's okay. It's a part of, it's who we are as humans. Yes. I wouldn't be, you know, really if I said, oh, it's, it's not a thing. No, it's a thing. It is a thing. <laughs> it's also a thing to release that to God because he mm -hmm. can handle it. He, he's here. He knows, like I said, he's, he knows our weaknesses. Okay. And how we rise above that and how we don't falter into the, the, the negative side of our thought is that we have mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. We give it to God and then we leave it there. Absolutely. And then we focus on our purpose. We focus on what is what our worth is. Yes. You know, yes. what who we are. Yeah, this may have happened. Dang, that that really hurt me. Uh, that rejection really, you know, did something to me. But God, you know, He is the greatest thing to us. 
Right. You know, and right. only he is able to bring us out of that out of that pain or out of that dysfunction or out of that hurt to allow it to rise up. Which will if we if our focus is on him, that will help us and cause us to forgive that person or forgive that thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we was telling talking to you earlier, forgiveness is really about your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do, in my opinion, it has nothing to do with the situation, the thing that led to, led you to need to forgive. It has nothing to do with that. True and honest forgiveness deals with the freeing, freeing of bondage to you over whatever it was. Yeah, amen. And giving it to God. I know people have heard this time and time again. Having Harboring unforgiveness is like drinking having poison for somebody and drinking it for yourself. Absolutely. It does nothing but bring you down. It's a, that weight in the pit of your stomach. Yes. Child, forgive them. Let mm-hmm. it go. Give it to God. Let yes. G- the Bible says vengeance are mine. You can't do nothing to that person. Nothing that you could do with your hand is going to mm-hmm. rectify whatever situation. Absolutely. You know, is it hard to forgive? It most certainly Absolutely. is. Because we often take forgiveness or think okay. that forgiveness means mm-hmm. you condone the situation, you accept the situation. And it right. means it does not mean that. Absolutely. Forgiveness is saying, God, this hurt me. I let it go. But in your word, you command that we forgive for you have forgiven me. And you let it go. It has nothing to do with saying that whatever happened was right. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do. It has everything to be obedient to God because it is a commandment. Absolutely. Love and forgiveness is a commandment. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Hurt, it does not discriminate. Uh, it doesn't matter how rich you are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you wearing a, a 10 carat diamond ring. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hurt, cre- hurt can even create in a marriage where people don't play fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, that's that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> that's a whole okay, nother words. podcast. But yeah, I mean, even in um, a marriage. You know, you can't say hateful and, and um, hurting words to one another. One is because when you became husband and wife, you became one. Right. So when I am speaking that, it, aren't I speaking that against my own self? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like, you know, I just want to say out there to any uh, husband and wife out there, play fair. Y- you know, if you're going to argue do it fairly. There's there's a there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. Okay, I remember at one relationship that I was in and we weren't playing fair. We were really arguing. It was a real deep argument. This was many years ago and they would say things that would hurt me. So, I would come back to say things that were worse and I could see And I don't know if it was a spiritual thing or what it was, but I could see him literally like shaking, Mm. like shaking because the words that I spoke was so bad. And I I have, I I will say that I am anointed woman of God. God had placed anointing on me, not by my choice, (laughs) (laughs) but I receive it and I can speak good things mm-hmm. over a person just as well as speaking something bad right. over a person. Mm-hmm. So I have to be very careful even with the words that come out of my mouth because those words can be very hurtful yes. to someone else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I want to repeat this uh, once again. Don't let unforgiveness keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Because when God calls you to do something, trust me, he's going to hit that spot. If that spot is not, if if it has not been uprooted out of you, he's going to deal with you with that. 
He's, if you got unforgiveness in your heart, okay, he's going to be like, okay, this is what we need to deal with. I mean, don't think that because Shalana and I are on this podcast that we don't deal with hurt or we haven't been faced with, with um, unforgiveness or, you know, things like that, because we really, we really do. I was faced with some things even today um, uh, before I left work, but I prayed over my morning and I thank God because it could have been worse. Yeah. You know, someone could have really taken out um, some, some na- or really said some nasty things to me all because of them dealing with another company put it that way. Someone that I knew they were dealing with the customer, but I had to deal with the customer to go over paperwork and stuff like that. Thank God, you know, I, I just went in there. I already knew the situation because it was from a different customers coming from a different branch and I already knew the situation. I said, okay, God, I'm leaving this in your hands. And you know, this lady was the nicest woman ever. Mm, that's good. It's how you handle things. Right. You know, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's, Whew, Jesus. I, like I said, y'all, I am really dealing with this thing because I have had a lot of uh, of hurt before in my past. And yes, you know, God is dealing with me, you know, with it. And it, it's not that I don't want to, you know, say anything about it. It's just that I'm, ex- I'm being exposed, right? So it kind of like, it's like a, it kind of chokes me up when I talk about it, put it that way. The, you know, sessions like this kind of chokes me up mm-hmm. a little bit because I'm, I'm exposing myself, right. not only, you know, to my co host but to the whole world. Right. You know, they, they pretty much know, they know my business, <laughs> one, which is fine because I know that iron sharpens iron and if someone needs that help, then we want to be able to do whatever we possibly can and the things that, you know, we've gone through, we want to be able to share with everyone as well. Did you have anything else to say about hurt and forgiveness before we move to love? Just to not stay there, get in. If you have a, a person, it's a process. Yeah. We don't like this word process. We don't want to go through some things we want to also you want to have this this popcorn mentality where everything is all done everything Mm -hmm. is all good but that's not the way the world works and knowing that hurt doesn't have a name or address Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, a particular person a particular degree or stature just being aware that we are prone for it yes but it only makes us stronger. <laughs> it only makes you, should only make you a even more determined yes. to overcome, to refine who you are. Not only who you are, but who you are meant to be and who you are meant to be in Christ. If we just keep our minds, we just keep our eyes on the commandments of, of Christ and of God. It eases the blow. Yes. Huh. <laughs> it really eases the blow. It, it anchors us to be reminded that in all of these topics, love, hurt, and forgiveness, Jesus. And yes. I, get, I get happy and I get joy, but Jesus is an example yes. of enduring each and every last one of them. Of, mm-hmm. of taking on, of, of doing, and of being, being hurt, being loved, and also extending forgiveness. And if any time, any moment that you're having where I just can't forget that, but that just hurt me, think of Jesus. And think mm-hmm. of you, you in relationship to him. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So on, on love. Just the word itself seems like it just brings joy, it brings a smile on my face. I, I it just say love, and it just brings a smile on my face. It really makes you feel feel tingly all over. Sometimes I remember I was in uh, when I first met my husband actually, and when he would come over just before I got married, when he would come over, when he would come, I just had butterflies in my stomach, and the feeling was. 
so <laughs> good. Mm, it was like, mushy, oh mushy. my <laughs> God. It was like, wow. So it's just so much excitement. It, I just felt butterflies in my stomach for so long. I mean, it lasts for a really, really, really long. I mean, years it lasts. It's gone now, y'all. Ooh. But <laughs> I mean, you she know, still I, love them, y'all. She still I, love them. I still love my baby, but I'm just saying, the butterflies don't come sometimes. But uh, yeah, uh huh. That's real. That's I mean, real. it's it's tenderness, it's deep affection, it's worship, y'all. It is worship. You wanna you wanna feel love and freedom? Worship, worship God, worship Him. I'm telling you, if you don't know how to worship, I tell you. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. Mm-hmm. You are holy. Are you are forgiving. You are loving. You know, I mean, that's what worship is. Telling him how great he is. How how much of a good God and good father he is. How much of a great creator he is. Endearment. And I also want to say that hate and love cannot live in the same space. Mm. And that space is your heart. How is it possible that you love a God that you've never seen before, but you in in and you and you see your neighbor like every single day, and it's like I don't love my neighbor. Right. I don't love my 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 baby daddy. Mm. I don't love this or I don't love that. But how could you not? Love people, but love God. Mm -hmm. We are made in his image. And regardless of what they have done to you or have done to us, we are on the journey of being healed. Mm -hmm. We are on the journey to say, hey, God, you know, if if you want to use someone, use me. I'm willing. I'm able. I am an open vessel for you to use help me to deliver the the word that you want someone uh, to tune in. You know, I just had a um, another friend who had been hurt just recently, just recently been in a relationship for a while. And, and yeah, things went south and she's hurt. She's hurt and she's hungry for love and she's hungry for the love of God. Mm. And sometimes people don't know that they need that support around them when, you know, they're going through something. Stop trying to do things by yourself. Do it. Don't do it. it. If you're in a, a, you know, if you got, some divorce papers delivered to you just recently and, you know, you had no idea or, you know, you know, your husband wanted to leave you or whatever the situation is. All I can say to you is truly surrender to God and have him show you what it is that he wants to reveal to you because every lesson we go through brings us more strength. Brings us more knowledge. You know, it's, it's like we're, we're, we're his babies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are God's babies. He loves us just like we love our children or we love our spouse or he, he loves us even more. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to um, say before I actually want to read you guys something a little bit about how I command my morning. Um, I actually am reading a book from Cindy Trim and it's called Commanding Your Morning. It's kind of old book, but I'm telling you, it unleashed the power of God in your life. And again, we don't fight against flesh and blood. So we need to be able to be able to stand up against the adversary. We need to be able to know what it is that we need to pray against. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. before I jump into that, did, is this something else that you wanted to say, Shalonda? Well, love, we all know all the butterflies and, you know, all the, the intimate 
uh, <laughs> feeling that you get when you hear the word love. It's like you bat into the eyes. Especially when you first like, get in love with Especially when you first get into it's one, fresh right? and new, you know, the emphasis of uh, something new, the newness of it all. It's just like, oh, lovey-dovey. But as you go on into that, that, that relationship, you got some years into that marriage or years to, into that situation. Love tends to move from the, the feeling into more of an action. Yeah. You know, how do you know? It, 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 it moves from feeling to it not being a preference anymore. But can you mm-hmm. love me when I get on your nerves? Yeah. <laughs> can you love me when you don't like me? You know, can you love me when I do make you mad or is this a conditional love? Uh-huh. If, do I have to do what you say or, 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 or stroke your ego every time in order for you to love me? How, how tight, how unbreakable, how strong is your love for real? You know, and so when we think about that that word that we throw it around, girl, I love you. Uh-huh. And I, you know, you just make my heart just do I, do I really? Yeah. <laughs> do, do I really? You know, and I, I find myself, I laugh at myself sometimes. It's just like, yeah, okay. Let me see. Let me see you love me. Let, let me let me see what your actions do. What does your actions, you know, truly tell me? What do your actions toward God tell you about how you love him? You know, mm-hmm. people make time and they're going to put effort into what they absolutely love. What is their priority? And so when we think about that word love, think mm-hmm. about the depth and the true meaning of yeah. it. Right. You know, it's not, some, it's not, a, it's a four letter word, but it's a four letter word that has a lot of depth and, and um, dimensions to it, you know? Yes. So. It, it feels good to be loved. I'm not gonna. It feels so good to be loved. Yes. That unconditional <laughs> love that is even better. If if you could love me through the ups and the downs, and love me through, you know, when I can't communicate, and and then when I can. If you love me through my deep darkest moments, uh-huh. financial difficulties. Oh. If you Woo-hoo. could love me through some financial difficulties and through eating spam <laughs> and I done, you know, went to Toya Seekers and squandered all my money, I don't. But uh, if you could love me through the the thick of it. Yes. Yes. The thick of it. Yes. Then we might have something to talk yes. about. And that's and the, and that's a a lot of marriages are going through um, a lot of things because of financial difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have to know where our priorities lie. Mm-hmm. We and it really do. It all anchors back to God. Love is love is a command. Yes. You know, you know, we read what is that, Corinthians thirteen, uh four through we read it, you know, mm-hmm. and like you know, Pastor just said, for weddings. But do we really sit and unpack that passage? You know, the, right. it ends with the greatest of these is love. love. The greatest commandment is love. And the second one is love your, love your God with all our heart, our mind, and all our soul. But the second greatest to this is what? <laughs> love thy uh, neighbor, neighbor. <laughs> as yourself. Let's take these steps. Do you love yourself? Because how can you extend love to anybody else if you don't even love yourself? Absolutely. That's where you need to start. Well, see, you know what? And that's another thing. You hit right on something right there. I think that that is so much, that that is why there's so much things going around um, in this world right now or going on in this world right now. It's because people don't love themselves. They don't love themselves. They don't even, sometimes they don't even know mm-hmm. that they need to love themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like first there's God because he created you. Right. Then it's yourself. Right. Because you need to know what love really is. And love really is unconditional. Yes. Unconditional. Yeah. You spit in my eye, I still love you. Mm-hmm. You right. slap my face, I still love you. Right. I might slap you back, but I'm going <laughs> to tell you about it. Hey, y'all, I'm human. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to say, girl, I love you too. You know what I mean? It's like, girl. I love you. Yeah, it's like, I love you too, but. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean, that, that touches on a, a lot of things that, wow. Know who you are in Christ and exactly. love yourself. You exactly. can't extend love. No. Until you how? How? Know who how? You are. And that's how, how we you? get into a lot of these situations where. 
we are left empty. We are left depressed because we walked yes. in it empty looking for somebody else to fill it. Absolutely. We, you, you hit it right on there. Right on there. Looking You're right. The, you walking I'm looking around. for my, my other half. No. Yeah. You you have your other half, meaning in your other side of your mind, love yourself. A- absolutely. Feel yourself absolutely. up. Absolutely. Encourage yourself. Encourage love yourself. Love on you. Know the, know the you that God placed in you. Amen. Before you, because you can't, I'm about to go tangent. You can't fill somebody else's cup. You can't. When you're on a half or quarter cup yourself. Yourself. <laughs> you know, again, it's this airplane mentality. What do they yeah. say? Put your Put mask, mask on, on first <laughs> before you can extend assistance to somebody else, even your children. Absolutely. You have to embrace the the flaws, the uniqueness, the everything about you first Absolutely. and love that thing love love the woman you are love, love the man that you are love the who the the makeup and who you are Absolutely. because if you don't love yourself you won't know mm-hmm. how to allow or how what the love quote unquote that other people should give you Absolutely, you'll accept anything uh-huh mm-hmm. you'll accept anything mm-hmm. thinking that is love oh you look cute oh he loved mm-hmm. me because you look cute Artificial loves, <laughs> you know, and it won't last. It won't. It, it won't. Never. It does. will not last. But if we are strong and and filled mm-hmm. up with with the love of God and what yeah. He's shown us and knowing our worth, Absolutely. we will have a standard so high that can't nobody that it they have to attest to the the, the size of the standard or the level of the standard that you come against or right. that you come presented as. You lower it, then they're going to know that they can play it. <laughs> so love yourself. It's an action. It's something you have to do each and Absolutely. every day. And it may sound weird, but, you know, if, if you're new to it, seriously, because I had an issue before as myself. I, I didn't love myself. I hated women. And when I started getting closer to God, he dealt with me on that thing. He made me a group leader for a group for of all women. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> it's like he will deal with Ooh, you, yeah. whatever he wants to get up out of you, if you're willing to allow him to deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, and then all of a sudden I just burst out crying. Cause one day I just looked in the mirror and I heard him say just a gently small, uh, small voice that said, but I made you woman mm. enough. Enough. <laughs> and the way I made you is enough. Amen. Yes, he did. It, it, it was like, it, it was an eye opener. Mm-hmm. It was an eye mm-hmm. opener to me because mm-hmm. I've been hurt. And it main, and a lot of my hurt came from other women mm. with their words so or the shy. things they, they, they said or behind my back or you know, they may have even spoken it over me and I didn't even know that they spoke it over me. That's why I denounce every negative thing that somebody else Amen. has spoken over my yes. life. So even the words that I may have spoken over my life, that was uh, contrary to what God's purpose and plan that he has had for me. Yes. So I, 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 I read my, my books on learning how to break this thing off of me because I want to grow. Right. I love learning. I love knowledge. Um, and the best way to do that is to learn it yourself and then teach it. Teach it yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a pro at, you know, being on this podcast and, and talking to people where a lot of people's like, oh my goodness. And it's like, I don't hear it that way. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because it's like, well, because you're, you're listening, you're listening to yourself. So it's, it's kind of different, but I know that I'm not doing this, you know, for me. I know that I'm doing this for others, but God is doing it for me. Yeah. I'm he's using me to do it for others, meanwhile he's doing it for me. Right. You know, and we have to, you know, pray and ask him reveal to me God, reveal to me what it is. Mm-hmm. Reveal to me that angers me. Reveal to me that hate that I have that's that's rooted in me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I I want to to put that, you know, in the forefront of my day yeah. every morning you got let's do a heart check yeah you know what what's what's going on in my heart that that i'm not aware of you know i might have said something or you know i might have got it fresh i might have got frustrated and then that thing turned into a seed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know 
And then all of a sudden it's creating more anger. And then I sin in my anger. And then, you know what I mean? Then it turns into unforgiveness and it just lingers on and on and it goes deeper and right. deeper and deeper. And it, it's like people don't even know that they didn't have wounds because they just want don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just cover it up and move on in my life. How? How are you gonna how are you gonna move on where Wherever you are, whatever age you were when you got hurt at that moment, that's where you that's where you still are. That's where you stop growing. So if you were 12 years old when you got hurt and you're still living in that hurt, guess what? That 12 little that 12 year old kid is still there. Look at that 12 year old kid. Tell that 12 year old kid, hey, I'm hurt. But I'm working on getting us to be able to meet together. You know, at some point, your character has to carry you a little bit further than where you are. You know, I, I, I truly, truly believe that. Is there anything else you wanted to say before I, I read um, what we normally, you know, command? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and read this, command your morning. This is something that I just actually wanted to share with everyone so you kind of understand what I am talking about. Um, some people do the 30-day walk with Shalanda is doing the mm -hmm. prayer walk. What I'm actually doing is commanding my morning and reading this book. But every single morning, now I read this. It says, I stand to command my morning and declare it is a new day. I take authority over my day in the name of Jesus. Every element of my day should, should shall cooperate and with purpose and destiny. Today is the dawning of a new day. My season of frustration and failures is over and I walk in a season of success and prosperity. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Today, I press toward the mark of a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Anything or anyone assigned to undermine, frustrate, hinder, or hurt me, I command to be moved out of my sphere of influence in Jesus' name. I command my day to fully cooperate with your plan and purpose for it. I greet today with great expectation of the good things you have prepared for me. I decree and declare that a new day is dawning and my ministry, my job, my business, my finances and my relationships and for my health. I download success, prosperity, health, wealth, vision, direction, ingenuity, creativity, spirituality, holiness, righteousness, peace, and resourcefulness from your spirit, Lord, into my day. I have a fresh excitement. I have a fresh mind. I have a fresh zeal. I have a fresh anointing that is uncontaminated and uncompromised by this anointing. Every yoke is broken off my life and is destroyed. Every burden is lift. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. All powerful God, place your anointing upon me. The anointing that is on my life repels every individual with a diabolical assignment. Let the anointing flow uncontaminated and unhindered upon my life. The anointing that is on my life for this season, mission, mandate, and purpose attracts only those with divinely ordained assignments. Amen and amen. amen. That was like, whew, so good, y'all. But guess what? I need you guys to tune in to next week. This is going to be part two. We're going to dive into our own experience and hurts. You just don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss part two, which is going to be the week after uh, next Monday. So anyway, you're going to be hearing part two of our love, forgiveness, and hurt next week. And you can also tune in to us. Yeah, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and WordPress. Yeah, so check us out, y'all. Thank you so much for joining the Lounge Chair Podcast. I'm your host again, Melissa Parsons. And Shalonda Wills. Peace. Bye. Bye-bye.
Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of The Lounge Chair. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show so they too can build a solid foundation of self-awareness and healthy emotional balance. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next episode.